educational robots. This is a topic that I find very interesting and is something that all of us in academia really need to continue to, to, to keep an eye on as well as to, to contemplate and to think about how are we going to integrate educational robots. Now, I know this has been sort of a, a very futuristic thing for quite a while now, but the development is nonstop. Um, there's just been so much leaps and bounds as far as how robots have been developing here recently, especially with the, the ongoing enhancements with AI. So of course we have things like the Tesla robot, which is very cool looking and is developing very quickly. But the biggest thing that has really pushed all of this is with the development of the Tesla bot has come competition. Competition from China, of course, that's an uh, always present thing, but also competition from uh, many different companies. You have NVIDIA that's uh, making leaps and strides with the uh, with their AI development. Of course, they have the graphics cards, but they're getting very heavily just directly into this aspect of AI as well as robots, and they're combining them as well. So you have Tesla that's combining the AI with robots, you have NVIDIA, and now of course you have OpenAI and a lot of powerful things that they're doing with that. And I'll get back to that here in a second. But I wanted to bring this up because here recently I had a chance to actually interact with a, a an educational robot. So one of my friends is a big time investor and uh, he was able to have an event and he brought the, the Moxie robot, which is this, uh, it's a children's educational robot. And man, it was just so impressive. The abilities of it to be able to, to interact. I was able to have a conversation with it. Of course, it's designed for a child, but it's uh, they're they're implementing new things with the Moxie robot so that it can actually teach the child. Initially, it was developed as somewhat of an educational robot, but also specifically for social development. So it has things like it has eye tracking, so uh, its animated face can actually watch you and then follow you with your gaze with its its gaze. So it helps to develop the child's ability to to look at to make eye contact to interact to talk. So very impressive to begin with, but now it's having more advanced AI placed into it so that it can do even more with the educational process. In the same way, we have these advanced robots, the most recent of which was the OpenAI robot, Devon, that came out. And there was a video that initially came out a couple of days ago as of the making of this video. I'm going to play just a short clip of that, and I want you... To, to watch it and then think about some of the educational implications as far as how we might use it in the classroom. Great, can I have something to eat? Sure thing. Great. Can you explain why you did what you just did while you pick up this trash? On it. So I gave you the apple because it's the only uh, edible item I could provide you with from the table. Great. So based on the scene right now, where do you think the dishes in front of you go next? The dishes on the table, like that plate and cup, are likely to go into the drying rack next. Great. Can you put them there? Of course. All right, so how do you think you did? I, I think I did pretty well. The apple found its new owner, the trash is gone, and the tableware is right where it belongs. I agree. Thanks, figure one. Pretty impressive, I think. Uh, there's a lot going on there. Its ability to multitask, but most importantly, its ability to reason. It was able to explain things. It was able to answer questions, to 
to do things, to interact, that's very powerful. Um, and now we need to start to think as these things actually really do develop, as they become actually useful, that's when we start to need to really consider how we might be able to use these in the classroom. Now, I think it's still a year or two out, um, but the big thing here is that these robots that we're talking about with the open AI robot, with the Tesla robot, those are robots that will actually be affordable, not the this pipe dream like uh, Boston Dynamics were awesome robots, you know, and they, they're continuing to be awesome robots, but those are designed as experimental things that cost hundreds of thousands of dollars. So we won't see Boston Dynamic robots in the classroom anytime soon, but things like the Tesla bot, things like the OpenAI bot, those are being designed in a way so that they could be mass produced, so that they can be in the tens of thousands, not in the hundreds of thousands. So this is something that might actually be able to be used within a classroom. So we have to be thinking about, okay, once we do have uh, an affordable robot that has real capabilities, how could we use it in the classroom? I know some of us will be very uh, adamantly against it. I don't want robots in my classroom. But we have to think, what is best for the student? What is best to help with their educational development? Now, uh, of course, I totally agree. There's pros and cons that we need to weigh about these things. But we have to think about use cases and how it could be beneficial. If I have a robot that has visual perception that can properly observe a student, can interact with the student, can give feedback, can give positive and negative feedback, can give a proper proper critique, that's going to be very useful. The ability to have a robot that could be in my classroom, that could split the class so that they would be doing half, half of the class could be interacting with the robot, half the class could be interacting with me. Then we switch. We could do all sorts of different activities. We could do all sorts of different things where now there is a better ratio of instructor to students because research has shown that that's very beneficial for learning. So the more active hands-on learning that we can do with the robot and the greater the capabilities of that robot, well, that's definitely a powerful thing for education. So we need to consider those type of applications, not just the novelty, oh, look, new technology, let's throw it in the classroom. No, 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 I'm not, I'm not for that at all. I'm for when we these robots become useful, become actually capable, then we need to really start to consider implementing this. But we need to start to think about it now. What should we be thinking about? What what could we be using these robots for once they become available, which I think will be very soon? So if we consider these things now, if we're proactive now, well, then we'll be that much more ready instead of being reactive when this technology really hits. Uh, it's, it's one of these things that I want us to think about these things. I want us to have these discussions now Robots in the classroom, how can they be useful? What are some things we need to watch out for? We want to avoid over-reliance. We want all these different things. We need to be having these discussions right now so that we don't have the situation where, just like many people say, that open AI and chat GPT was just thrust upon us out of nowhere. Of course, that's not correct either because generative AI did exist before chat GPT. Students were already using it before chat GPT. I wrote an article about that. Uh, so these things were there, but of course, most people chose to not pay attention to it or they didn't know about it fully yet. But that's why I'm really pushing this idea of robotics, robots, and how they could be used in the classroom in the appropriate way. But again, we have to have those discussions. We have to have those debates and think about where would it be viable? Where would it make sense to use it? Where maybe we shouldn't use it? Again, we have to make those decisions, but we need to have this awareness. Because placing AI inside of a, of a fully capable robot is totally a game changer. And it's going to enhance education in many different ways. We need to be prepared for that. And we need to be on the front edge of that. So that's something that we all need to come together. And again, in our community of practice here and, and really start to think about how this could work and how it would be the best, most beneficial way moving forward. Thank you, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it gives you something to think about. And again, this is all great stuff that we could be talking to students about as well uh, when we have these discussions, interact with other instructors so that we can come up with, with good solutions. 
please share and like this video so that we can continue to develop our community of inquiry. And remember, learning is for life. Thank you.